you and whoever curses you I will curse and all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of More at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Okay, so that is, uh, and that's the word of God, that's our scripture. And I'm inviting everybody to reflect on why uh, this is our today's scripture reading. Uh, and uh, the, the scripture itself is very brief. And it is the law of connection, God and Abraham. Continue, Anne. The law of connection, God and Abraham. At first glance, the incident at the Tower of Babel took like an angry God bent on punishing the people for disobedience. But it was much more than that. Actually, God, God was implementing a plan called Divide and Conquer. In Genesis 11, the Lord divided the people into many language groups. In Genesis 12, he chose one of those groups and made a covenant with one of their members. God spoke to Abraham and promised to bless him. And through him, the Lord, and through him, to bless the entire human race. Because of that covenant, Abraham became the father of the Hebrew nation. It's, um, it's important to observe how God promised, sorry, it is important to observe how God proposed his plan. He told Abraham that he would bless him along with his cattle, land, family, and name. God spoke to Abraham heart to heart revealing to him the blessings he would enjoy through the covenant. And Abraham was so dumb. He took God up. Come again. The Come again. And, and Abraham was, oh, sorry. And Abraham was no dummy. He took God up on the proposed deal. Where Abraham might have chosen to obey God simply because he is God, the Lord made the effort to connect with Abraham first. He touched Abraham's heart before asking for his hand. Amen. Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, that's that's our scripture reading today. And let me just try to see whether I can narrow it down so that we are maybe on one page um, um yeah just a minute yeah uh, no i put it at yeah Okay, so um, we have the Bible, re the, the, the scripture itself, and that is Genesis 12, 1 to 7, uh, about God's connection with Abraham. But I'm just wondering, Anne, as you lead us into this scripture, what do you mean by the law of connection? Uh, from the content that you have just explored here today. 
So let, let's let's have your observations. Yeah. Uh, the law of connection. Hmm. What I'm getting from here is that Abraham was in Haran and maybe he had his own plans and God had his plans upon Abraham's life. So sometimes we have our own plans, but God has even greater plans for our lives. So what I get, if I connect to this with what we are doing, uh, all of us in this class, I can say that we are connected to this class by God. He has good plans in our lives. He has good promises. He knows why we are here, the number that are in this class, and he has good plans. So whatever we are doing, we should have that confidence that the Lord God is with us. He will help us even as we come up with our topics. Let's believe that he's going to direct us. He has directed us this far we have come. It is not easy. He's faithful. He will continue to be with us. And any help that we need, any connection that we need, he will always be available to see us through. All right. Okay. Uh, good observations. Uh, I'd like some other uh, reflections, interpretations for today's uh, uh, Sam Nebera. Uh, pick it up from there. I would, I would uh, want to make my interpretation of uh, the scripture. And, and I want to believe that uh, it's just the other day you were taking us through some pyramid. I, I can't remember the title because I, I don't have a reference material. But I remember how you emphasized the importance of uh, trust in leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we are learning here is uh, the importance of uh, connection. How a leader, in this case God, uh, should aim to connect with uh, the followers, let me call them that, before they can even start on the tasks that they have. And, and so this scripture actually um, upholds the, the importance of uh, that kind of connection where the leader trusts the followers and the followers trust the leader. That way they can move forward and achieve uh, their goals. That would be my interpretation. Thank you. Nabera, yes. Uh, trustworthiness. Um, obedience. But there's something hidden in uh, in this scripture and uh, what we have added at the end there. And remember, this is a class in leadership uh, policy studies. Uh, and uh, who is the greatest leader here? It is God. And he, chose, he chooses Abraham. Just look at the gifts he's giving Abraham. Uh, I'll make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I'll make your name great and you'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Uh, what a glorification from God uh, to Abraham. And then uh, Nebera and Anne also intimated to this, it's a measure of uh, trustworthiness. Uh, but there is something about the law of connection, which I want us to bring out in our devotion, vis-a-vis -vis the course we are doing as leaders. Uh, author law, your hand is up. 
Evening, Prof. Thank you. Uh, uh, I look at several things that happen in the Bible. Mm. Uh, God created us humanity, but because we were disobedient to God, and we see that a situation that happened in the time of Noah. From mm. then, God decided that uh, he will not destroy humanity completely. From this generation that came out of Noah, he was going to get somebody. Among those people, when he looked, he saw Abraham. The heart of Abraham was actually somebody that he could, he could do. Uh, he could do something in to turn around. I remember in the, in the old in the New Testament, Jesus is telling the disciples, "You did not choose me; I chose you." First, so in the Bible, the, the theme runs throughout the Bible that. God first loved us. He loved us. He didn't want to destroy us, even when we are disobedient. And the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So this connection is God actually planning ahead of time to save humanity and using Abraham as that tree. That if we come through through Abraham, once we, we believe God, we become part of the lineage of Abraham. And so that is the connection that is throughout in the Bible. And God's intention is to save us as human beings. He didn't want to destroy us completely, even though we are disobedient. So obedience is a very important part of this, this connection between Abraham and God. He did not question God. When God told him, get up and go, he didn't say, no, why should I go? Why should I leave my people? He didn't ask any question like that because he was dealing with God. And God is the almighty God. Is the creator of humanity. So what I'm seeing here is the connection is God wants to link with us all the time. In the Bible, it says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So when God has seen somebody among this, this generation that is so wicked, he will choose that person always. He did that with Enoch. Enoch, the God, and the Bible is saying that Enoch walked with God, and it was he was not. Because God took him. Elijah, I mean Elijah went like that also. Once you have you have got yourself like this, God will use you, use you to reach many, many other people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before, before Paul Amata comes in, uh, if we look at the scripture, so Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lord went with him. I hope you remember our instruction to always remember Lord's wife. Uh, Abraham was 20, 75 years old when he set out from Haram. He took his wife, Sarai or Sarah, his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haram. And they set out for the land of Canaan. And they arrived there. I, I hope you are seeing uh, the similarities with your journey here. And uh, there is a promise as to where we are going. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moray of Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I'll give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. I, I want you to note that um, something very significant, and uh, many of you are young. Uh, among my people, my sub-tribe of the Luya, uh, when I bought land in Soy, at my gates, there is a tree. In fact, there, there are two trees on the opposite sides of the gate, which we planted. I planted when uh, we started settling in that land. My father was, of course, there to to lay the foundation of the semi-permanent house. Uh, when I say lay the foundation, it means digging the hole to take the first post. 
of the same permanent house, but we planted a tree, and it's among the the Luyas, and uh, particularly among the Maragolis, uh, we plant that tree, and it has biblical significance. It is uh, historical. We are believed the Bantus to have come down the Nile from Egypt, and there's a tree uh, that has uh, its origins in Egypt. It is called the Marcamia platicalix, the biological name, Marcamia platicalix. Uh, among the Luyas, we call it Luciola. Now, that tree is very significant. Uh, and uh, it, it, typically, every home, let me call it Luya home, you will not miss to see that tree. Uh, so so <laughs> trees have significance. Um, but that's not the point I'm emphasizing here. Uh, that uh, you have an instruction to complete this journey. And uh, you have been asked to go forth and in a very special way, this class, uh, you you are blessed. We are discussing with the uh, the director of order, Dr. Mwaka, and I was asking her. Uh, you, you know, uh, my spirit tells me that I will actually literally be supervising these fifty five students or fifty students. Because I'm going to make sure that they, they have gone through the chapter one, two, and three. So uh, then I become the first supervisor, not for any any other reason, but just that I'll have done that. And then uh, the second supervisors or, or my other colleagues then would take up to work with the students in chapter four and chapter five. So in a very special way, uh, we are making you into a great generation of master students and we are blessing you and uh, your song will always be sung that that class that class that class of 55 do you know that 40 plus went to do a phd and all those phds you see in the various universities in kenya uh, teaching leadership and policy studies came from the Easter. Paul Amata. Amen. Paul. Are you still yes, there? Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Take good it out. Hello to my colleagues. Uh, first, I want to say that uh, uh, we really appreciate your invalued vision to us and that support. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, as I relate this uh, verse to what you just said, uh, the power of uh, the law of connection, uh, I'm, I'm seeing God providing a vision to Abraham through the promises he made to Abraham. And, uh, and that's the connection I'm seeing Abraham getting attached to God and God getting attached to Abraham through the, 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 the promises. So those promises are visions which were later fulfilled in Abraham's uh, history. And uh, from what we've just said, as a leader uh, to us and the institution, you've just promised us better things ahead of us, graduating, going to PhD. And then the vision, that's the connection now we are, I'm, I'm trying to relate with this verse. Thank you. Very good. Uh, and so, uh, if you look at uh, here, if you focus there, uh, as, as we finish the small devotion, uh, note this, um, we are saying that uh, it is important to observe how God proposed the plan. It is Deista that proposed and envisaged this program. And by the way, this program is not really Deista, to be honest. This is a program that uh, 
I encountered at Texas A&M, and it was a very, very strong program in Texas State and beyond. What you're doing, all these components, is what is covered there. And uh, we are also going to ask them to help us, uh, Texas A&M and University of uh, Colorado, uh, to help us in constructing the PhD curriculum, which already we have done the basic framework. But so it's important to observe how God proposed his plan. He told Abraham that he would bless him along with his cattle, land, family, and men. God spoke to Abraham heart to heart. This is what I was looking for, heart to heart. And, and I'm hoping, and this is what I've, uh, I've told my colleagues who are in this program, that uh, I would like this, this program to be a model. And, and so God spoke to Abraham heart to heart, just like I'm talking to you heart to heart revealing to you the blessings you will enjoy through this covenant in this class. And Abraham was not dummy, neither are you. He took up, he took God up to the proposed deal. So how do you take us on the proposed deal? It's by making sure that, like now, everybody must have a topic. Everybody must have the background to the problem statement, the statement problem itself, the purpose and the objectives, because that is the plan. So how do you take up a hero and his team of lecturers in this program? Is by saying we are all at objective level in proposal one. And today, Prof is going to talk about limitations and delimitations. He's going to talk about assumptions. He will want to mention very briefly the theoretical and conceptual framework so that now all of you can construct your chapter one. So uh, you take us on on our promised deal, just like Abraham did, because we have truly spoken to you heart to heart. In the way we have done the first courses in the first semester and now the second semester. It is, it is very heartening that uh, by the time we finish this semester, all of you will have a rudimentary proposal. Some of you will have farmed up a proposal ready to defend. That is, take you taking us up on our proposed promise. But finally, while Abraham might have chosen to obey God, like you will, being obedient in these classes, enthusiastic, attending classes, simply because this is the university and you're looking for a degree, the Lord made the effort to connect with Abraham first. And so as leaders, you must learn to connect to your constituency first. And so I hope in none of my classes, and I've told management and everybody Senate, in, in, in master's and PhD particularly, it is not a matter of saying, you know you are a master's student or a PhD student, so it's up to you. No, no. The Lord made the effort to connect with Abraham first. But look at the last sentence. How did he do it? He touched Abraham's heart before asking for his hand. Yeah. So, if I want the kind of master's degrees I want you to produce for Dayst and Kenya, I must start up something in your heart. I must, because all of you have a very high IQ, you are intelligent. This far the Lord has brought you in your life, but we must touch your heart so that you now pick it up to say, I surrender 
to your supervisor, please take me to where you want us to go because of the deal that we all made a covenant around. This is interesting. Even God believed in emotional intelligence. Very interesting. He touched the heart. Yeah. And when you touch to the heart, and uh, I'll, be, I'll be talking about this branding next, uh, next class. When you touch the heart, then as a leader, you have lit the fire to burn the bricks and you can go and sleep. You can now seal the holes and go and sleep and you'll come and find the bricks very well burnt. So this is the significance of this devotion. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, uh, Helen, or I'm just reading your names, or Gaki, or Sam Nabera, uh, Ingosi, Juliet, uh, Desmond, uh, Mutula, one of our PhD students who is going through this uh, section of the proposal development, Madiang, Cindy, Emma, Uchami, and the rest, everybody in this class will, will adhere to the law of connection. And that is covenancy. But the leader, the leader, this is why I am so clear that it is my obligation to touch your heart. Then I will demand the best from you. Gatere Silvanas, pray for us. Gatere, you there? If not, Ndunge, Caroline. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your name, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, surpass our understanding. We thank you, Lord, because knew us before we were formed and you hold our destiny dear to you, heart, O oh Lord. And now, Lord, we commit our hearts before you, knowing that nothing is impossible with you and committing this journey that looks wide ahead of us, that you will enable us by your grace, by your power, and that, Lord, you will give us the the ability to balance all the priorities that are surrounding us. Enable us, Lord, by your grace and wisdom to do what is right as leaders. Father, whatever we are getting from these lessons, help us to implement them in our lives, in our personal lives, our families, our workplace. Help us, Lord, to be contagious, to change the world, oh God to be your disciples, to do the right thing, and to emulate you. Yes, Lord, you are pleased with us when we walk in your word. That's our desire, my Father. So guide us, Lord, and order our steps. Thank you for all our research assistants, for all our lecturers. Thank you for Prof, oh Lord. Specifically, we speak your blessing upon his life for choosing to guide us. Some of us, Lord, we are seeing your, your, your power in us through him. And we are trusting you, Lord, that the, 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 the visions that we've birthed in our lives through this uh, master's program will come to fruition in due time. Thank you, Lord, for all the other faculty members, bless them, Lord. We pray for Manyara and everyone else who is supposed to be with us in this cohort. 
the Lord God, you will enable us all together to move as one. We pray for the provision of resources for those who are trusting in you for the tuition fee, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, even for other needs that are unspoken. Meet with them, Almighty God. Thank you for our families. We pray that you're going to give them to persevere as they wait on us, O oh Lord, as we stay long hours without them. Pray that you're going to give them the comfort they need. We love you, Lord, and we bless your name. Pray all this trusting in you, O oh God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, what a prayer, what a sharing. Um, I, I would like us to, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to look at the remaining research topics. And uh, I got very few, so we'll go through them, then I'll cover the other material that I wanted to cover. Uh, to to seal the holes and to ask you questions about chapter one, uh, and then uh, the the coordinate the coordinator uh, uh, will let me know how people will get uh, my comments on their background to the problem problem statement. Those who attempted, I would like them to get the feedback. Um, and then we try to move a little faster with chapter two because chapter two now is diverg divergent or or yeah scattered because we are we are all dealing with different places. And then uh, we'll go to chapter three, which is uh, kind of aggregated. It is uh, one. So we'll go to chapter three. And then uh, we start getting your full proposals for 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 possible defense for starting the defense. Um, I saw a hand up. Somebody carried their hand. I don't know who that was. Is the hand still up? Yes, Professor. Yes. Uh, good evening. Is that Kedogo? Yes, this is me. This is Kedogo. Yeah. Can we oh, mute? Uh, Can we mute? We love, we love our, our kids. Let's mute. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, it is my humble request mm. that I begin off with my topic because I'm currently uh, going off. Okay. No, no problem. Yes. Yeah. No okay, thank so, you. Okay, um, but you remember the law of connection, what we have just said, and covenancy. So I, I was a little surprised, uh, Dr. Mwaka, that I only got 40, 12. 12 plus 32 is 40, 44, so that's a class. I hope we're not leaving any people behind. Was, yes, uh, Prof. I think there was an updated list, but I don't know if you got it. Uh, uh, because I think only four students and two are on the, on safari on their on their way, uh, so I would expect probably more than that. Magda might have updated, and they can the ones who sent can see whether they are on the list or not. But I know that there was. Well, an, if they any came, then they should forward it to you. Will if I look at them after I've done the the few. Uh, bridging things I want to do, but these are the ones I received from my office. And uh, let's go to number nine. Is that you, Doliana? Yes, that's me. Yeah. So, Do Doliana, I I looked at, um, and by the way, we are not talking to Doliana; we are talking to all of us. I looked at. Uh, uh, her topic and uh, the influence for, of form environment, environmental factors to performance in students from five schools in Baringo. Uh, first of all, uh, remove this, the influence 
of uh, uh, I, I, I don't think we want that there. Okay. Just a let, let me duplicate this first. Just okay. hold on. Sorry. Um, so that I'm able to edit it. Yeah. Um, Prof, as you edit, there will be candidates in the PhD program also have joined other than Desmond. Uh, I, they would wish to learn from this as well. Thank you. Okay. So I uh, we have the inference. Um, and uh, I have removed that because that's what we're going to establish, whether there is an inference. Huh? That's the okay. motive of the research. So I, I changed your topic into an analysis, an analysis of home environmental factors and performance, not two, and performance in, I don't know whether these are selected schools because, so it will be in selected schools in Baringo County, Kenya. I think that's perfect. You have got it, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so you are doing an analysis of home environmental factors and performance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in selected, don't put, I don't know how many. These five, that is now in sampling. You will tell us, Uko, Kumbali, chapter three. Yeah? Okay. In selected schools in Baringo Kenya, right? Now, Perfect. can you tell us in three minutes, because we have listened to the others. Can you tell us what 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 are you going to chase out there? Uh, okay, so um, where, from where I teach, I'm in Baringo. So from the school I teach, um, we are always having issues that the students are missing school. And when we delve uh, further, we find that uh, most of these issues are related with home. So um, when I try and ask around from other colleagues from within, uh, from day schools, they seem to share in with the same uh, problems. So um, I would like to understand why this is happening. Uh, most of the absent students seem to have something at home that is making them to miss out on school. Also, I would like to uh, look at the socioeconomic uh, backgrounds of uh, the students and the, and, and the structure <clears throat> and how this will influence uh, the academic performance of um, the students from the selected schools. Also, I would want to understand uh, or to come up with a solution to uh, enable me. Sorry, I'd, I'd like to uh, explore the structure of the families uh, and uh, the, the dynamic influence uh, on the students' academic uh, motivation and how culture affects the students and uh, find out solutions to the same. So, so I think be very careful not to be too excited about the home environmental factors. And uh, when, you, when you are doing the conceptual framework, I would like you to pick uh, a certain number of factors, for example, the level of education of the parents. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the other one would be sometimes the home environmental factor is the economic aspect, uh, uh -huh. and then, and then maybe cultural practices. So okay. don't 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 spread too much. 
uh, and when you say performance in selected schools, then we want to know what are you looking at in terms of performance, right? Yes, Professor. So, so. All Thank right, you. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, let's go to Ochami. Ochami, I, I looked at uh, your topic. Uh, before you tell me what you are looking for, an approach for successful implementation. You are already presuming why an approach for successful, uh, then it ceases to be research. And uh, what I did, uh, and, and by the way, what I do, it doesn't mean it is, it is uh, the book of Genesis. You can you can argue it out with the supervisor. I have no problem, but I'm just uh, giving you an example. So what I did, uh, Ochami, I I expanded. I expanded this all this. Uh, this I expanded. Uh, that I removed it. So I just went to core banking systems in Kenya. a case of Taiwan banks. And, 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 and you can, because an approach for successful implementation, that those are, those, that's what the research would bring out based on the objectives. But you are looking at core banking systems in Kenya. And uh, I don't know what you want. I couldn't add what I wanted to add because I don't know what a case of tire one banks would imply. So uh, core banking systems in Kenya, uh, what is it? And then I wondered, could he be saying this? Could he be saying, and listen to me, by the way, so chime on the line. Yes, Prof, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very much around. Yeah. Following. I, I was yeah. saying, is it this? implementation of core banking systems in Kenya that you're going to 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 interrogate a case of tire one banks please uh, talk to us thank you prof I had submitted this uh, this work uh, last week uh, so it's one week old but after yesterday's um, class I had amended it to read implementation mm -hmm. of core banking systems in Kenya, challenges and prospects, based on the guidance yeah. you had given us. Very good, very good. So yeah. uh, that is, so you had changed it? Eh? Yes, yes. Uh, so am I assuming challenges and? Prospects. And prospects, yes. That, that, that opens it up, challenges and prospects. Uh, but but tell us what what is it about what what are you looking for what's the problem all right so prof um i've had a chance of working with the, most of the tr one banks in kenya cooperative mm -hmm. bank national bank kcb and now mm -hmm. equity bank and um, mm -hmm. one of the main challenges we face in technology is around uh, the core banking system the core banking mm -hmm. system is the the foundation on which the bank runs all the other peripheral systems connect to it. And mm -hmm. so essentially it is the bank as it were. Mm -hmm. Now you'll realize that um, whenever we get towards the uh, end of the month, in most of these banks, you will notice there is a, um, there is degradation of services as offered by the banks. There will be so many complaints by customers saying that mm -hmm. they are getting um, unsatisfactory service. So mm -hmm. my study seeks to understand what are the challenges what are the underlying problems that uh, that lead to these poor experiences? As mm -hmm. we go into the busy peak period, for example, during December, Christmas holidays, um, customers will hardly mm -hmm. make successful transactions because of mm -hmm. underlying uh, factors. And this is what I'm seeking to understand and then mm -hmm. propose solutions towards mm -hmm. um, resolving. Okay. Okay, yeah. good. Sounds reasonable. Uh, we hope we can get you somebody from finance uh, to to move in with you into chapter four and chapter five 
uh, very good, researchable. Stephen Odimu, are you there? Uh, 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 Prof, I'm not sure that Stephen, Stephen had requested, uh, I think um, he he was uh, being, just been assigned a, a closure of an event, but he's coming, we can skip him and then he joins. Okay, so Roach, Madiang, Daniel. Um, hey, Prof, hi, how are you doing? I'm here. Good, good. you're there, right. Yeah, I I I want you to to rethink this. The influence okay. of personal philosophy. Uh, I had troubles. Uh, when when you come to that opening, this this whole sentence, I had problems with this. Sorry, I had problems with. Uh, let me get forget this mouse. It's messing me up. I had problems with this uh, this this statement, and uh, I want you to see why I had a problem. And uh, I just mm -hmm. thought, what what you see the influence of personal philosophy uh, of public health. The English is not reading, and then on the leadership styles. So me, I would have just started this topic. Personally, I would have started here and said leadership styles uh, in the health sector or of health sector NGOs, that's okay. Senior management, team members, and mm -hmm. I, this is my suggestion, and uh, this and performance, what did I write? Uh, and performance achievement. I don't know whether it makes sense to you, but I want you to argue it out for me. This, this I thought you are looking at leadership styles of health sector NGOs, uh -huh. uh, senior management team members, and uh, uh, the performance achievement. Or performance levels in those organizations. Uh, this influence of personal philosophy that that borders on the style of leadership, or what influences the style of leadership, and that one now I I uh, I, I I wanted to leave it uh, to be part of the study. Oh, okay. Yeah. So tell me what what is the issue here? What's the problem? Yeah, thank you very much. And um, I take your uh, um, comments on that. I think two things come out first here because um, personal philosophy philosophy of public health was part of a concept in itself, part of our last mm -hmm. semester's talk were to develop our personal philosophies in the areas we were working in. So yeah. I think that elongates it too much. But mm -hmm. you also provoke a thought in terms of personal philosophy in itself could also be an aspect of leadership style. So yeah. I get that. Yeah. So what's the background that I have? Um, ideally in uh, the public health NGO sector that you are working in, there yeah. are a lot of staff response to dissatisfaction on the kind of leadership that they get. And so sometimes it leads to folks seeking greener pastures anywhere, uh, mm. elsewhere. Mm. And uh, what I hear is that people are reacting to the leadership styles or the application of the same. Mm. And so I wanted to pursue the basis of the leadership styles of those mm. who form the senior management team, team members. Okay. Okay, and so I, I I don't I don't I don't want us uh, I, I because we are trying to trim the title. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm also convinced we don't need the word team. Okay, I think through it because uh, okay. leaders mm -hmm. leadership types of health sector NGO senior management members, mm -hmm. but you even notice when you say senior management, they are members. You see? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yes, we want mm. to 
trim it out. And when you trim that out, you now come to the famous 13 words. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stephen and uh, uh, Ochami, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Uh, uh, members of the class, remember there is value in you sharpening your topic. There is great value. And, and as you struggle to sharpen your topic, you begin to understand where you are going. You see, like now, uh, Madiang, I have already seen this topic. If I was your supervisor, this is mm -hmm. leadership styles, right? Mm -hmm. See that? Yep. That's the independent variable. And performance mm -hmm. achievement is the what? The dependent. Mm -hmm. So I can all, I can see the the conceptual framework already, and so with your supervisor, we ask ourselves, what do we really want to put under leadership styles? Uh -huh. can we just can we just pick constructs in yeah. transformational leadership, and uh -huh. one of them is personal philosophy. You okay. Know, in our questionnaire, we shall be asking people about their personal philosophy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, as, yeah. as, as an attribute towards leadership style. Absolutely. Then can it be motivation? Uh, can it be support for the members? Mm. Uh, could it be high ideals? You know, when we are doing all those, we know the big umbrella is transformation, but those are the ones we can chase in our questionnaire. You're not going to ask somebody, are you a transformational leader? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're going to ask them, uh, how do you motivate your, your staff? Uh, mm. You set high ideals for them. Do you have a personal philosophy? You see? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, those, and those responses then will constitute our independent variables. And the, mm. the, the outcome is performance achievement, high performance achievement. Yeah. That only comes when you have sharpened. But... If it was left the way it was, like this, with all this, you begin to, to wonder, what, what is it? Is it influence? Is influence my DV? What is it? I want to see performance achievement. So I hope you are convinced about the few changes there. Yeah, I am, I am and thank you for that critique. Thank you. Okay, Leah, Ongaya, online? Yes, yes, Prof, I'm online. Yeah, obviously, this goes. Uh -huh. This one goes. Mm. So, evaluating effective, just say effectiveness. Effectiveness okay. for student leadership training programs. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you're saying a case of selected universities. Why don't you say a case of selected universities in Kenya? Okay. Because you know, when you say universities in Nairobi County and Kenya has only 99 universities, huh? mm. Kenya has 99 universities. So if I was doing sampling, I expect you to do, uh, if this was a quantitative study, I expect around for you to collect data from about 30 universities. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know why, why do you want to do universities in Nairobi? And yet student leadership training programs um, are a requirement of the act, so they are done in every university. Right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So uh, you know, I wish I was still in high school. Uh, my students would be saying yes, sir. But this one, <laughs> they don't say yes, sir. They just say yes. Oh yeah, hero. Oh okay, I hear. <laughs> and uh, so, sorry, bro. No, no, I'm just joking. Okay. Just, just fine. Okay. Uh. Uh, for me, I like this. Uh, so, so what will be the independent variables will be the training programs. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, and 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 the the outcome will be um, stable universities or uh, efficient leadership, 
or effective leadership in universities as your outcome. And and that one you can measure. You can you can go to universities and just measure, find out whether they have had any crisis. How do they solve issues when there's no money for sports and the bus has to take students for rugby? How, all those things. Huh? Yes, Prof. Okay, good. Stella Sanyo, are you there? Thank you. Yes, I'm Stella. here. Yeah, Stella. Uh, I, I, first of all, before I tell you what I've done, I was not sure uh, what, what is it that you want to study? What is the problem? Tell me first. Because you gave us three alternatives, which was good. Uh, uh, what I want to study is um, a topic around uh, special needs and the challenges around uh, raising them and mm -hmm. having them in school. So um, as a parent, getting the proper support and uh, the special needs is specifically the cognitive ones, uh, children with autism, with cerebral palsy, that kind of special needs. So uh, how do the government policies work to support these children to ensure that they uh, still get education just like any other children? And uh, yes, that they're supported. Yeah, so I, I, you know, a critical look, right? you are, you are, Trying to be tough, huh? a critical look. Uh, so I, I just said, why don't we say the magnitude, magnitude, for example, of government policy? Mm -hmm. I, I I don't like that word adoption. Uh, I change that word to application. Yeah, magnitude of government policy application in schools with children with special needs. And this is a this is this is government. Government spreads beyond Nairobi. Uh, so in Kenya, and then we shall scope and say this was in Nairobi, right? So yes, I, I want to explain to me, and, and, and I'm just wondering, I was just I just wanted to be clear. What do you mean by adoption? Uh, adoption is 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 it being the policy is there or rather mm -hmm. I have found some literature showing that the policy is there but are they being adopted in schools so that is the you know what the word adoption means do we ad adopt policies or we yeah we apply them yeah mm hmm so the magnitude of government policy application, yeah? Yes. Agreed? In Agreed. schools with children with special needs in Kenya or in selected schools in Nairobi, Kenya. I have no problem, right? Yes. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is 10, 11, 12, Kenya 13. If you put in Nairobi, Kenya, it will be 13, 14, 15. Still okay. All right? But okay, Sanya, thank you, Prof. Sanya, I am, uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to, to a study like this where we can look at the magnitude and then we can be doing a paper because I was one of the people in the ministry during um, when we did the session of paper uh, one of 2005 and we found that uh, that time we had over one point something million children with disabilities that had not been brought out from their homes. So it would be interesting to see the magnitude of government policy application. 
and and this does not just is not it's not just uh disability friendly environments yeah there is also affirmative action mm -hmm. we'd also want to know uh, that that the special needs children had extra capitation there is mm -hmm. a government policy on early assessment centers how are they working so this is very interesting all right okay thank you yeah, and I, I hope you're convinced that i ran away from one and two because uh, don't go to yes, the house I, I uh, household and parents run away from there okay okay that's uh, fine i'm okay with that thank you so Kessa, did you decide to yes. stay with the junior police officers in Mbakasi, or uh, you you decided to to deal with transformational leadership, Prof. This was my second topic. I had mm. done two. Mm. One was on transformational leadership and uh, looking at the aspect of motivation among officers in the police service, because I had to to talk of Kenya as a country because. Generally, the police officers in the country, those the whole you, country. Those of you, sorry, those of you who came from wherever, if you have not had tea, please forgive me. I know your saliva is is is, is really bothering you as you see me drink tea, and there's just 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 <laughs> well. That's why I'm where I am, and you're where you are. That's why. I, I don't drive a pro box and you know those kind of things are things you accept in life and they can cause that they can be motivation factors. Huh? So just allow me to take my tea. <laughs> the bread, bro. <laughs> okay. Well, sounds um, like people grab bands and talk like that. <laughs> Chris, Chris, we kept... you can see our yes, bro. You know, I have a problem with this topic and listen to me yes. very carefully. Yes, bro. You are talking about, when I look at this topic, you are talking about uh, this. You are talking about transformational leadership. Is it versus motivation? In other words, is it a function of motivation? But you and me, in my leadership class, you know that motivation is one of the constructs of transformational leadership. Yes. Yeah. So it can't be motivation. It can't be transformation leadership versus motivation. No, uh, it has to be this motivation is a subset of transformational leadership. So there's something we should be looking in, out in these officers. Uh, in We could be looking at diligence, commitment to duty, sacrifice, because they have partaken of the, the ways of a transformational leader. I don't know whether you get what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, yes. When you look at our notes on transformational leadership, uh, item number two rotates around motivation. So what we should be looking for is uh, high levels of performance, and not transformation leadership versus motivation. It must be performance, commitment, you know, reliability, uh, ownership, those kind of things. But between me and you, this then would be a better standing topic for research. Yeah, and right. and and uh, we are going to use this transformational leadership, but we are going to operationalize it, and say transformation leadership includes the following constructs, and then you'll find motivation is there. So it can't be it is transformation leadership versus something versus commitment. For example, are you getting it? Yes, yes, versus commitment among uh, officers. 
in the police service or, or among police officers in Kenya. Whatever. So, so. Yes, Prof. Now, my question is, I had, uh, yesterday's topic was about an assessment of job satisfaction yeah. among officers yeah. within the police service in Kenya. And this one on transformational leadership. The reason why I brought it to was to get your guidance on which one, uh, uh, of course, I'm comfortable doing either, any of the two. Mm. But then from where you sit, um, from, yeah, from where I sit, I've said this is a stronger topic because you are bringing in aspects of leadership. The other one was about job satisfaction and assessment, isn't it? Yes, yes, bro. And you can then infer maybe it is leadership, but it might not be leadership, it might be Mambo person. You know, we promise yes. them uniforms, we promise them, uh, you know, this and that and that. Okay. Are you getting it? Yes, I'm getting it, bro. Okay. Very good. So think about it. Thank you. Evans Lusasi. Not online. Evans. Evans. Are you, are you online? Yes, Mbona yeah, he says yes. Kuwait is very hot. Yes, sir. Pole. Okay, so this I don't this one. Uh, it's okay, but I have problems. The effect effectiveness of child protection and safeguarding policies in Kenyan schools. Yes. I think uh, it will be easier right. to go in schools, and there's a tool for this, and go and measure this. And and if you don't agree with me, you can uh, you can argue it out with your supervisor. Yes. But me, I think you want to go um, and look at the level of application. Exactly. Yeah, of these policies in Kenyan schools. Yes. That's all. Yes, yes. But tell us, uh, this This is now the third uh, thesis, and I have no problem. Yes. I know each of you will have a different uh, perspective, entry, thinking, and so on. Tell us, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, having been or uh, having taught in uh, international schools for the past like uh, seven or eight eight years, mm. uh, I've come to experience first uh, first hand um, um, uh, interaction with how these schools uh, implement child protection and and welfare there are systems uh, in place uh, mm. that are, are, are well elaborate and uh, they are they are easy to identify with when matters or concerns with the students in school and even at home uh, are mm. concerned how to report who to report and and the procedures are well established um, <clears throat> this is contrary to our um, local schools or Kenyan schools, where uh, some of these structures are uh, they are there, but uh, I don't know if it is a fact that uh, some of the teachers or the administrators or the implementers ignore or they don't know or they're not aware that they exist. And um, and uh, um, you'll find that in some of our local schools, uh, even measures or ways of interventions in maybe like uh, disciplines or how do we identify child abuse or neglect or exploitation, mm -hmm. it's not even mm -hmm. yes with mm -hmm. our adults. So um, that is why, I, as you said, the level of application is it that is it that they are there but they are not being applied, or when maybe the rubber meets the the road, where does the problem now uh, persist from or comes in? Okay. Yes. Very good. I, I, again, researchable, and I am very excited for you. If if you you sharpen 
your variables. And okay. please just, just use the standard tool. Okay. Of child protection and uh, safeguarding measures. And okay. then uh, go and get that dot, uh, data. Okay. So uh, the application uh, will be, this tool will be our independent variable. Okay. And the, the dependent variable then actually uh, measures the magnitude of child protection and uh, in Kenyan schools. Okay. Also. Thank you so much. Yes, Othello. Uh, he yes, has disappeared. I'm there. Ah. Mm. First of all, um, <laughs> I was I was I, I did I wasn't surprised this was coming from you. It sounds like you, the puzzle of booming water sale by private tankers and chronic water shortage in Nairobi County. What what are you trying to? What are you? struggling with first of all before i tell you what i made of your topic yes prof uh, i'm looking at a situation where you find that they, these people are selling water but many households or uh, many residents do not have water in their tap and, mm. uh, so i'm wondering who actually owns these private water tankers passing around with clean water and then mm. Even you find that car washers have more water than the residents in the, in the city. Many places have no water. So are, are you are you worried? Are you worried about the ownership, or are you worried about the policies uh, that surround water distribution and supply? Yes, I'm worried about the, the policy. I, I'm trying to find out uh, where. Where these people, where where do they get their sources of water? Could it be that the same people who are supposed to pipe water to the residents are actually using these people to to, to sell water? The water has become almost like uh, gold. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to look at. So is this is this on water sub water sell water supply? Basically, water supply to residents. You, in the city. You know, I want you to uh, universalize this topic. This is about um, you, what what you want to do is to investigate, or you want to look at the policies the policies in place on uh, city water supply. Yes in view of chronic water shortages. Yes. The story of uh, tankers having water will be part of your research insight. Yes. And uh, we will be trying to, to say, when you have failed policies, people can close a whole pipeline to load their tankers mm -hmm. and then make money out of it as a majority of the population. Not only has chronic water shortage, but they are exposed to waterborne diseases and so on and so forth. Yes. So this will be in our problem statement. This will be the narrative book. Yes. And we shall have statistics of a population of five million inhabitants in Nairobi, almost six. And you can get the cubic liters that are, are needed and mm -hmm. how many are actually supplied. Yes. So you must bring this out as a, a policy leadership dilemma. Thank you, Prof. Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I, I was provoking you to say, yes, that uh, policies on water supplies. Mm -hmm. in yeah. Nairobi city, yes? yes, and then 
put a full column and say a contradiction in terms. All right. Yeah, it's a contradiction. Then now we shall bring in, you can, by the way, there's no way you can miss water if you have money in Nairobi. You just mm -hmm. go and attack it at your door, right? Yes. Yeah. So so let's 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 get to the, the level of leadership and policy. And this actually presents, I was very excited about this, Othello, because this presents a case of contradiction in terms. Yes. That that there is no water in the tap here, and there's a trailer parked mm -hmm. outside with water. So it's it's interesting, yeah, very interesting. We we can make it very interesting, and I'm Thank sure you. you'll do it with your supervisor. Yes, very good. Um, you, uh, we had finished. So Osanya, are you there, Oyimi? Yes, Prof. Good evening. I'm present. Yeah, good evening. Uh, I, I want everybody to do this. Osanya, thank you for bringing up this question. I want everybody to do this. Uh, uh, let me stop sharing for a moment. We'll come back. But I want everybody to go to their computers, their mobiles, uh, and uh, go to Google. Mm, let me see. I want everybody to do this. I uh, go there. Is everybody there? Is everybody there? Yeah. Yes. Where I am, and go to type Google Scholar Laban Ayiro. By the way, are we seeing this page? I hope so. Yes, we are. And then click where there is Laban Peter Hero, click on Google Scholar. And you have a page like this one. Is everybody there? Yes. 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 Yeah, please go there. And I'm looking at Os Osanya's uh, topic reads that the effect of emotional intelligence and leadership style on academic performance in schools. And, and I, I have, um, if you look at this, this article, you can click on it. Look, uh, before you click on it, first of all, are we here? Um, uh, just, just say yes, yes, yes. I want to see on the chat. How many yeah. people are there? Just yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Tasleen, you think I was a backbencher? Huh? Okay. Another one is saying Muluya <laughs> Nachai. Aye. Sasa. Can we, are we, how many, oh, very good. Now, let's come here. Everybody, very good. We have more than 30 of you already here. Now, look here. If you look at the first article, says an analysis of emotional intelligence and the performance of principals in selected schools in Kenya, published in the Advances in Developing Human Resources. But there is this one. Transformational leadership and school outcomes in Kenya, does emotional intelligence matter? I hope we are together. Yes. Yes. 
uh, I just want to be assured. So uh, Osanya's topic is the effect of emotional intelligence and leadership style on academic performance in schools. Now, I, I chose transformational leadership and school outcomes in Kenya. And this was an analysis of emotional intelligence and the performance of principals in selected schools. Click on this, click on this one first, this one, click. And uh, are we here? Yes. 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 Can, can somebody can somebody read for us this description? Uh, can somebody read for us this yes. description? Um, somebody who is able to read for us that description. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Increased interest in leadership preparation and development in base is based on the fact that school leaders huh? can make a... Is it... No. You're reading no. something wrong. Hmm. I told you to... You're supposed to read the description, the article yeah. investigates the degree. You read that. The read article that. investigates the degree of association between the emotional intelligence of school principals and their performance rating. The concept of Emotional intelligence is defined and data collected using the Maya, Salovey, and Caruso emotional intelligence test. This is related to the performance of the, of the school in terms of test scores in national examinations as well, as well as other measurable variables at the school level. The findings render valuable information indicating that there was a significance significant relationship between a school principal's emotional intelligence and the school success as measured by the rating of school principals who participated in the study. The study will enable further exploration into the emotional, cognitive, and psychological structures of these virtual managers in the education sector using established HRD training programs aimed at improving AI and performance of school principals. Yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would, I would advise that Tosanya, the topic is excellent, but you must then punish yourself. And I don't want this, this is at, at master's level would be too much. You, it means then you are going to 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 you are going to have to look at psychometric tests for EI. You have to first of all be you can't prescribe them you yourself because I had to be certified, and then you have to uh, buy them online, and then distribute them to principals. And then related to what you mean by uh, academic performance. And as I've said time and again, uh, we are not really running after academic performance only, the, not just test scores in national examinations, but there are other measurables that would need to go with it. So uh, that's why I wanted to use this as an illustration that uh, Keep thinking like that. But for now, uh, you have to ground yourself thoroughly in, in the area of emotional intelligence uh, before you can now apply it in a thesis situation. So that, that's what I mean. Now let's go to this one. Let's go back. Let's go to transformation leadership and school outcomes in Kenya. Does emotional intelligence matter? and click on it. And uh, somebody can, somebody should, should be ready to read for us that. I can read. Yeah, go ahead. 
uh, <clears throat> increased interest in leadership preparation and development is based on the fact that school leaders can make a difference in both the effectiveness and efficiency of schooling. Symptomatic of weak management systems, more than 300 secondary schools experienced turbulence in Kenya between the month of May and August in 2011 due to mis mismanagement resulting in the destruction of property worth millions of shillings. Various theories and models have been constructed to explain the leadership functions and suggest different approaches to leadership. A growing body of studies has shown that emotional intelligence is inherently associated with transformational leadership, whose theory has highlighted the importance of leaders' influence on followers' emotional states. This study has a specific purpose of advancing and expanding research on emotional intelligence and transformational leadership in schools in Kenya. So, uh, Osanya, you can safely, you can safely uh, assume and you can cite a year uh, in articles on emotional intelligence and other authors to say that it has been shown that emotional in intelligence has an influence. So you don't even have to really understand you. You read a bit of it, but you can cite other authorities and then say, in my study, I was going to look at the, the leadership style and academic performance. And if I see there is a correlation then I can attribute it to emotional intelligence. I wish I could say that better. So it, it, is, it is, at this time, you cannot talk about the effect of emotional intelligence. You can, you can say, can this be attributed to emotional intelligence? Question mark. Like I said here, does emotional intelligence matter? Osanya, are you there? There, Prof. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that you get what I'm saying. So you you are going to wonder, but you're going to look at style of leadership and school outcomes. And you're going to operationalize school outcomes as your dependent variable. And the and the leadership styles as the independent variables. And then emotional intelligence will be the intervening variable. Tonight, I want to. Yeah, I'm in the circle inside. Okay, so I, I would be willing to supervise you here because we need more authorities, more understanding. And, uh, you know, uh, by the grace of God, I'm one of the referenced authorities in emotional intelligence and leadership in Africa. So we can we can try to, to shepherd you there. So what you do, Osanya, is to pick this article. Yes, bro. Yeah, and, and read read the two articles. The first one is full of uh, statistics arising out of the tool. This was what I did for my postdoc studies at Texas and uh, the first one. But the second one, you can read that article and, and uh, several others, we can give you more articles to read around there. Then me and you can construct how that thesis should look like. But this is interesting stuff. I was very impressed at your courage. And uh, you reminded me how I ran from my grandfather's hands when, we, when he had carried four of his grandchildren for circumcision. <laughs> and then I ran to the front uh, uh, and... Uh, when the circumciser came, he normally comes and threatens. Uh, everybody else ran away, but I was there, ready, standing. And then after he circumcised, about 10, 15 of us, he ran away. You know, they're normally mad during that season. Uh, quite frankly, Osanya and the class, I don't know what I'm talking about. So... <laughs> 
nitamwachia wenyewe mtafakari kwa hayo Brenda Bro, so 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 Sanya can you tell me what 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 just in a very rudimentary way uh, what what is bothering you Yeah <clears throat> I'm in fact surprised what was really bothering me has already been done that means my scope of reading was very low Mm. Yeah, after I've seen your articles, mm. I think I have a solution to what was what was really hitting me up. Mm. But I like now the angle we want to take. Mm. We look at leadership mm. vis a vis performance because yeah. already emotional intelligence has been attributed to it. Mm. So mine is to affirm, mm. and then it is emotional intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I hope I've started your thinking. And then, ladies and gentlemen, there is this graph. Uh, in academia, uh, people will ask you, what is your H index? What is your I10 index? Uh, and what how many citations do you carry on this in, in your in your in your academic standing? Uh for me, what has tied me down is just administration. But I should be having about a thousand citations uh, at my level now. But uh, I'm working hard. We 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 are trying to. There are more publications that are not that are not yet posted here. Uh, there's uh, the first one is the book, uh, the one uh, uh, that is in the library, a functional approach to educational research methods. I would like to do more publication. I would like to hit a thousand citations. Plus, and I would like to have an HI index of around 15 and an I10 index of around 12 or 13. Yeah, you, you just Google, ask yourself, what are these citations? What is H index, what I10 index? Uh, that's how you build, that's how you become an authority. Uh, people will know how, people want to know how highly cited are you? And uh, citing, uh, 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 being cited uh, here at 498, I'm saying I would like to have a thousand plus. That means over, over 500 people scattered in the earth have cited you. They don't know you, they have just read your work and cited. So uh, it is usually the dream of every every academician to, to, to look, like now, cited by 180. And uh, what you do is then you look at the articles. You click there. And uh, in this all these articles that you see here, all these articles have cited uh, the author. Uh, so that is, that is what you tried. So you look at an article like this one. Uh, uh, I've just gone to it and you can follow it up. I, I'm trying to start some interest in you so that you also become uh, academic. So you can actually go to the papers and, and, and look at them and see who have they cited. And you can see this one. Are you, are you seeing this on the screen? Are we able to see? Yes. Yeah. So you can see... Uh, this person cited a hero, and uh, I don't know who this person is. And that is that is the wonder of being an academician. But let me tell you for free, even getting 10, 20, 50, 100 citations is not an easy... I don't know these people. You see these people wrote this discussion paper. I don't know them. Irene, is it Eileen, Carol, Jack... I don't know them, but they cite you uh, because of the them using your material. And so I, I as we teach you, you need to aspire to be cited. Uh, so on and so on. Good. Uh, citing. Important. All right. We stop uh, that and. Uh, let me let me go back and share what we are sharing.
Um, and here we are. And that's why in academia, uh, it, is, it is demanded of you to, to know your seniors. So, so if, if you are under the, the feet, I'm not, not talking about I'm not talking about a student, I'm talking about a lecturer. If you are a, if you are a lecturer and you have somebody who has been cited widely across the globe, your respect begins there. The authority you submit to that so that you can also become. Brenda, no, Brian Mwenda, sorry, Brian, are you there? So, sorry, Prof. Yes. But this is Sanya. Kindly help me now reframe the topic. Yeah, so I, I have I have said uh let, let me put it this way. Pick that top that title of my publication, the one on transformational leadership, right? Yes, yes. The way it is, but put a question mark. I don't know that you get what I'm saying. I got it, prof. Yeah. Then we'll we'll move from there. Thank you. All right. Brian, are you there? Uh yes, Professor Brian is here. Yeah. So evaluation uh, of the effectiveness of existing child. Uh I, I removed this. I allowed you to remain with the evaluation of uh, effectiveness. So I removed that. Remove it from your evaluation of existing child protection policies and programs in Nairobi County in preventing and responding to various forms of child ab abuse. No, this is this is actually what child protection policies are all about. Yeah, okay. It's all about yeah. preventing and responding. So I also removed that, right? So we are going to do an an an, and you start with an evaluation of existing child protection policies and programs in Nairobi County, Kenya. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So Brian, talk to us. Just three minutes. Um. So I've been I've been um in the education field for quite some time now, and um even outside the education field, we normally see programs like uh, the Mata Hatran, Wangari Madai Foundations, and, and trying to actually combat something in that particular field. So I ask myself in the education uh, sector, when dealing with child protection policies, we do have a, a lot of organizations that come up with programs and policies on safeguarding the children. So my what I wanted to know is, how effective are they? How many children have actually been uh, helped or saved by such programs and policies? So that is what I'm trying to achieve here. Very good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, very interesting. Uh, all these people in the area of child protection, special needs, emotional intelligence, uh, uh, you know, there's interesting stuff there. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know whether Gagi is on, online yesterday, is Gaki in class today? Is she? I was asking Dr. Mwaka whether she picked, you should supervise her, whether you picked Gaki, are you in, online? Yes, Prof, I am. Yeah, what, what aspect were you chasing in your study? What type of disability was that? What I would term as the learning disorders because they fall under they're, they're, it's one but uh, has three dimensions. One, mm. the major one being dyslexia, then secondly, ADHD. Yeah, very interesting. But you know, yesterday you had no topic, yeah? you just had an area of studies, didn't you? Yeah, I had written the topic, but you told me it's quite broad, so I have to narrow it down mm. to what I'm researching on. That is what I'm saying. You didn't have a topic. You had a name. <laughs> okay. okay yeah, so I'm waiting for the topic. Yeah? All right. Yes, Caroline. So, so, Professor, before you move on to Caroline, mm. 
Brian here again. Yeah, yeah. I uh, after sending that, I actually rewatched uh, the class that you had yesterday, and I saw the word count seems to matter. And I I had actually rephrased it um, as I've posted in the chat. I'm not sure if you're able to see the chat section, but just to read for you, I had said um, assessing child protection policies and programs in Nairobi effectiveness and recommendations would you how would these two contrast what i've posted there and what you um come no, up with right now no 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 no. we are not we are not when we are assessing we are not yes. assessing effectiveness only yeah and uh, don't don't masquerade as a researcher to say recommendations in your topic you are still you are still uh, <laughs> Still a, a novice, so no, 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 don't. Let's use this one. We have said, eh? thank you so much, and, and we'll give recommendations in our chapter five. Okay, that's our good, perfect. Caroline Dunge, yes, prof. Yeah, um, competency based education training in Kenyan public vocational training centers. Effective implementation strategies. I crossed that, this effective implementation strategies. I crossed that and just said an empirical assessment. Did you come up? Yes, I am. Hmm. So, what I'm saying, yes, what competency based education training in Kenyan public vocational training centers. Yes? Yes, sir. And what? Empirical. Empirical, empirical assessment. assessment. That's all. Yes? Yes, An empirical bro. assessment. Are we, are we in agreement? An empirical assessment. Do, do you understand what that means? Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, that means you're going to collect primary data and you're going to tell us how it is, the status of uh, CBC training. And the words are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The magical number. Thank you. So already, you people, you are very lucky. Some of us had no idea how to trim a topic, how to, nobody gave us inputs, and uh, we just kept on going. But there you are. Um, I, I, I am satisfied. We are blessed. Yeah. Jimmy Sanya? Jimmy Sanya? Yes, bro. Yes. Okay, I don't know whether you can can refer back to my my topic, topic number six. Uh -huh. Kind if it's possible. And, and Prof, we have both additional topics. When you finish, probably you'll look at them. That was the... that was yesterday's yesterday's oh. yes, part one. Yesterday's work. Yes. Um. Yes, I'm there. Assessing. Yes. Efficacy of education policies? E exactly that one. You had actually on, uh, asked me to. Policy. Exactly. Mm. You had actually uh, helped me to replace the assessment, mm -hmm. assessing with evaluating. Yeah. Suppose we delete evaluating and then we simply talk of efficacy of discipline related education policies on trans in schools in Kenya. Yeah. I think when you tell me that, I feel encouraged. I feel replenished. I feel justified that I, um, I'm teaching you research methods because I know what you're saying. And if a student is able to, to, to feel confident that I'm going to look at the efficacy of education policies on yeah. truancy in secondary schools in Kenya, yeah. Can I excite you? I would have put there a full column after and Kenya. say, yeah, after after Kenya, I would have put there a, a full column and said, 
a mixed methods approach. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Question two, sir. Yeah. Uh, what dictates on uh, whether we have to indicate the, the selection of this, the sites for study? Because in, when, you are walking, the... when you are walking towards a case study, mm -hmm. and uh, by the way, some of the ones we have reluctantly said Nairobi or Baringo or Wajia, yeah? If, if they turn out not to be case studies, we shall expand them. Yeah, but you know, you know, uh, when people are hungry, uh, even if, if you bring yesterday's Ugali, Mbaye Walipika Jana, is called uh, Kiporo kwa Kiswahili. Ukiwapa Kiporo na mboga baridi wanakula. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Prof. Okay, Asante. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are taking a five-minute break. Excuse As me, Prof. As I with Carol, what she's saying. Okay. Five-minute break. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Getare. Getare, how do you know this is Bujeni? Keep on. I was there. Uh... I was a pioneer student of Kaimosi Friends University <laughs> in Viga, okay. Chemtulu. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Prof, okay. we have additional that they came in a, a little yeah, bit Yeah, so, late. Carol, call okay. me, call me on, uh, on, uh, on my phone. Eh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Five minutes break, stretch out, then you can come back. Thank you. The PhD student who are here, you can notice that these topics are not no longer having those, like they're very universal and global as opposed to like this county, this particular place, unless otherwise it has to be there. So that's one thing you learn. And then the 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 wording that we usually use a lot of people in data has impact, influence, unless otherwise it has to fit there. Uh, that's one thing you notice these topics are getting out uh, and revived around that place so that uh, you are more, unless it is selected, then you can have a county, but it, you, these topics are more Kenya-wide, international and global as opposed to just that. It has to be really vetted out that it really fits into a specific, say, county or so.
Hey, folks are very quiet. How are you? <laughs> Hi, how are you too? yeah, you're you you're welcome. Um prof is just almost getting on, so um uh, probably just uh, let me be sure first of all choose my virtual drag rather than it look like um, you know, messy. So uh so <laughs> Don't worry about that. So I hope that now you um definitely get into understand topics. And personally, I'm in a very bad light and 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 uh, try just to make it look better. Uh, but um, I think oh, Prof has come in. Prof, <laughs> you can take it on. Yeah, Thank just, you. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Just... Okay, uh, Professor, as we give you a minute, can I ask a question, Brian? Here yeah. is that. Brian or Broz? Bra Brian. Okay. Um, in in the topic, I just um we just refined my topic here, which ended with in Nairobi, Kenya. Is is there any way to like make that broader, or will it draw draw me away from the trail I'm currently pursuing? Is there anything? Is there any way to like add maybe a global context to it, or we just um stick with Nairobi Kenya. Prof can respond to that. He was trying to review it. I don't know if Prof had the question. Um, yeah, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to mark these others first. I'm coming. I'll come back to it. I'll come back, Brian. Okay, okay. thank you. Well, he, he will be back. Um and um I think the other ones you can know you as were responded to yesterday. Uh Boaz, you you remember your own? It, you've now reshaped it uh, now officially your topic is on <laughs> yes yes, no, yes well. i think i think mine yeah mine has been reshaped yeah. yeah so it's still a, a... all right yeah thank you all right all right yes. uh i think i'm ready uh to go we don't have much time and there's so much i'd hope to cover uh, but uh there's no need to rush if we are not uh, understanding these things. So um, uh, these are the ones I've just received. Is Festus Leparaco online? Mm, Festus, I saw him. Uh, Festus. Maybe we can move on as we get hold of him. Probably just dropped, but he was on. Okay. Mogere, Moseti. From here. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I want us to just talk about job satisfaction and teacher retention in selected schools in Kenya. Uh, I I have no problem with assessing, but uh, I am a little worried when you have um, a teaching force of close to a quarter million uh, teachers. Uh, we are going to do job satisfaction and teacher retention. Um, I'm worried about the sampling because assessing involves sampling and uh, the sampling here would be crazy. So we might have to reduce the scope. And uh, here you, you could pick uh, like the teachers in... Uh, junior secondary. I don't know whether I'm with you. Oh, yes. Though and my where, well. Yeah, and Sorry. that's where we have had a lot of fluidity, uh, discontent and so on. So that's where you go and measure job satisfaction. Uh, and uh, you, you have cut down the population drastically. And uh, we can then sample. So I, I want you to reduce the scope, not just teacher retention. Which which kind of teachers are we talking about, right? 
saw teacher retention at uh, in selected, maybe you could say JSS, right? Schools in Kenya. Uh, would it be okay if maybe I just uh, replace that with international schools? Uh, would you have job dissatisfaction in, in international school? Yeah, because um, well, I'm I'm wondering actually one one of the things that actually um informed uh, this um topic was the fact that uh, in the recent past most teachers okay well I'm 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 in the same field and um mm. I've, I've, I've experienced uh, so many teachers actually who are exiting Kenya and uh, I've managed to talk to a number of my friends actually everybody the moment we talk everybody is on like they are on their on their way out. So I really want to understand what exactly is the cause of yeah, this. Yeah, that, that's fine. So can, can we then talk about uh, private schools? Yes. Yeah? And that, that would be interesting because uh, people would think that's not a problem, isn't it? Actually, actually, I, I was very categorical, the international schools, because everybody thinks that, you know, in the international sector or in the international schools, yeah. uh, for example, paid uh, so highly. And uh, why would people actually want to, like, exit Kenya, maybe come to the Middle East or whichever other country? I hear you. So in international, right? Yes. Schools. Okay. So that was my only fear. Otherwise, that is researchable. Uh, Juliet, I think uh, we remove impact, but leadership styles, um, people in my class on leadership, please break this down. Are you talking about instructional leadership? Are you talking about collaborative leadership? Are you talking about transformational leadership and what aspects of transformational leadership? It is too broad. On the academic performance, academic performance of secondary schools, my God. So your unit of analysis would be a school. Um, that, that worries me a bit because of the, the sampling but also academic performance of schools. It wouldn't be too difficult. We have secondary data for performance from NEC, but uh, the leadership style you would have to, to interview. And uh, can we qualify the schools? Can we talk of uh, junior secondary or senior secondary? Uh, I think for now we're talking about senior secondary because that's where you have the exams. So we need to do that. Otherwise, it is too broad. I think my comment was that it is, this is, this is my comment, is too broad uh, for us to, to, to pin down what we want to study. But tell me, Afande, what did you want to do, Juliet? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. But uh, maybe before I give my side, I've really struggled even to come up with a topic. That's why I, my submission was even late. Mm. Because, uh, yeah, uh, I, am a, I must admit I am a slow learner. I grasp things a bit slowly after sitting don't, and don't, internalizing. Don't words have meaning, yeah? Words yes, it meaning. is. Okay. But so what am I it? supposed to say? <laughs> okay, no, no. sound. I, I think what you need is uh, mentoring. Are you, where are you domiciled? Are you in Nairobi or you're outside? I live in Kajiado North sub-county in uh, Matasia. Okay, so mm -hmm. are you able to get to Dr. Mwaka? Yes. Yeah, so through her, uh, we can we can look at topics uh, uh, to refine them. I think what you have written is very similar to what Ruth had done, and I was telling her that is just too broad, and you won't bring out a study that that uh, is focused and will give us applicable results. So I would like to 
suggests that we 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 try to model this. I know this, I know what you're trying to do, uh, but we need to model that, right? Okay. Yeah, but I don't I don't buy those words of slow learners and, and the rest. Regina. Yes, Prof. Yes, I I liked this topic. Challenges faced by students from low income backgrounds. And uh, I, I removed and policy strategies to help them. I removed that and I put a, a full column and, uh, and said a failure of pro, pro poor policies. You know, that's very pro provocative. Uh, there are many policies around these children from low backgrounds. There is the con constituency fund bursaries. Yes. Uh, for this, for for these students, uh, we also have now um, support by the government for those sub sub county schools funding teachers and so on. Uh, so is this a failure of pro poor policies that I know the problem here is that a lot of these students drop out. Yes. Yeah, they don't they don't get to form four. The transition is very low. And that's why I was very excited. So I suggest we leave this topic as challenges faced by students from low income backgrounds uh, dash a failure of pro poor policies then we shall investigate. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But tell yes. me, tell me, tell me what was running through your mind, Regina? Yes. I went for this topic because I teach in a public day school. Mm. And uh, I have seen how parents struggle to raise fees, even with a free secondary education. Yeah. We have parents who are still struggling. These secondary schools attract students mostly from low-income backgrounds. Mm -hmm. These students are faced with a lot of challenges. A class mm -hmm. of 100 students are admitted in Form 1, but by the time they exit in Form 4, mm -hmm. uh, 20, 20 students have dropped out. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I went for that topic. Yeah, really, it's very depressing. It's very yeah. depressing, and uh, this is what this this is what troubles me. I have uh, m my grandchildren uh, have a, generally a policy that uh, I support their fees, particularly when they're going for one, whether their parents are lawyers or whatever they are working and so on. But I also have a grandchild whom. I uh, brought up. Uh, uh, he was left in my hands a, a premature of six months, and so we have brought him up with Agnes. We have brought up this kid, uh, uh, so I pay fees. Now I I find it very hard why my grandchild should benefit from free secondary education, or my child for that matter. Uh, and uh, some of us feel very strongly that uh, we should have a voucher system that uh, Regina gives more money to a school like where Regina is teaching. And that uh, why are you giving free tuition secondary school to parents in Kenya High, in Nairobi school, in what what? Everybody gets the same amount. And yet those parents did not ask you for that money. So you are trying to share the money among everybody in Nairobi school when half of the students in Nairobi school, their parents can afford. So is it a failure of pro-poor policies? And uh, I am with you, Regina. I, I hope you'll get a supervisor who, who feels distressed and strained like me. Thank you. Perfect. Eugene Situma? Yes, Prof. Yes, I have gone for Roman 1 
and I am suggesting that this topic, so I've, I've, the yellows, the yellow parts, and the local administration and subnational have, have expanded them. And I'm saying we're simply going to say the role of school leadership, and I'm happy, school leadership in promoting school completion of teenage mothers in Kenya. And for me, I want us to bring out the policy implications the policy implications. So this is what I've done. I've done, I've basically done this. I've been very brutal with your topic. Uh, the role of this, this is what I've done. The role of school leadership in promoting school completion of teenage mothers in Kenya policy implications. This one does not read. All right. Uh, yes, you, you know, you know this school leadership. This school leadership. Forget about uh, government policies and what and what. It is school leadership that has to be empathic to these kids, but also to arrest the problem. You know, the problem here for these teenage mothers. Is not that they have they have gotten babies and they want to come to our classes. No, this is this is the manifestation of the problem. The problem are systemic problems like poverty and uh, retrogressive cultural practices, and then a leadership that is empathic to these kind of kids. And most of these kids come from very poor homes. So, so policy implications is, is the bigger issue. And uh, I would like us to leave the topic there and then with your, your supervisor, you can, you can, your second supervisor, you can refine it. But I'll still have an eye on most of these topics as we go along. Very good. Thank you, Prof. Uh, it's much clearer, much clearer. Yeah, let's Thank let's you. stick to that. And and this you, you can see this is this is uh, if you run through all the topics we have held, when you see some uniqueness like school completion of teenage mothers, it's huge. It's a big global debate. So we we'll, we we'll look at the policies around uh, the returning of this. People, but we look at the circumstances, then we look at a leadership. And by the way, uh, indications are that the principles, female principles, are the most against. That is interesting. The return of these children to school. I was telling somebody one of one of the most wonderful people, a relative of ours from my wife's place, was a very 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 bright girl, and went to Kabarak High School, and uh, she got. Unfortunately, she conceived, and of course was expelled. And uh, the parents and everybody, you know, stigmatized, uh, uh, didn't want her. But we then took her on in our family. She would come and stay with us. And she went through a local school, private, private, uh, Harambe school from Kabarak, you can imagine. But she did so well and still went on to university and now has worked with the international NGO world. And has been, she's the only one who, who who's, doesn't think I'm too rich to be given money. Yeah. And even my dream of the Mercedes, she has been very supportive. 
So, yeah, there are many lessons. There are many lessons. All right. Um, Gaki, you, you raised your hand, yes? Yes, Prof, you had requested uh, me, you had guided me, sorry, on uh, adjusting my topic. I have written it down in the chat. If you can have okay, a look, at, look it, at it, I really appreciate Thank you. Yeah, I will. I will. Uh, um, mm, I'm trying to see. Yeah, it's, this, it's this the one on inclusive, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I I picked it up. Uh, I will. I'll cause discussion afterwards. All right. All right. Uh, Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah. So, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have some? I want comments. I want worries. Uh, now that. Uh, you know, what we have done now is that we have cleared uh, the toughest part of uh, your chapter one. And hopefully, uh, I can see hands, I'm picking them up. Let me just pick what the key has given so that I don't forget the topic. I might forget it. Yeah. Okay, um, save this. Uh, sorry, Prof, to take you back. I think there were two omissions also for Judy, and uh, not that there were omissions, they submitted late. Mm -hmm. They are uh, posted on the chat. Yeah, Judy those will pick, them, will pick them separately. So that uh, I, I attend to these questions, uh, we, we will pick them separately. So um, I saw two hands up. Uh, would you mind PhD student asking a question? This one was asked not me. That, not, not at all. So Brian oh. Mender, Muku Ngunzi, and Josephine K in that order than anybody else. Okay. This is not an open session for questions yet. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, Professor Brian here. I asked you how um, I can add a global context or a global touch in my in my title. Yeah, we we uh, will just avoid the Nairobi for now. And 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 then how do I look at programs and policies globally without? Isn't that too too large of a scope? No. It will be programs and policies. We are doing programs and policies around what? You remember? Um, yes. Around? So I, we um, child protection policies. Yeah. So we'll we'll use the Kenyan context. Uh -huh. Yes. But in, our, but in our introduction, we shall come from UNESCO. You know, this child yeah. protection is a UNESCO initiative. Yes. Yes. Uh, we will we'll take that global aspect of UNESCO, then come down to Kenya. Okay, but, and that's why we leave our our topic open. And I'm really excited that you you people are beginning to see the the essence of universality as a researcher. Yes, and uh, let me just emphasize this because that that's uh, Brian. Thank you for that. I, I, I'm going to. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll pick all the questions, but I, I just wanted to share this. When I talk about universality, some people think you know a hero, you know, wants to complicate things. Uh, you know, we we are at masters, we 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 don't need to do. But I'm trying to stretch you this early, so that you can become. Um, and let me just show you illustrate something uh, um, this is um, let's see let us share this
Uh, look at this. Mm. Uh, are you seeing this uh, email, Gmail? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, th this is on 16th of March. I am in Kenya. And uh, this was sent to me on 15th, on Friday. Dear Professor Hiro, good afternoon. I hope you are doing well. I would like to nominate you as an examiner for one of my PhD students. The title of his study is South African School Principles Perspectives on Continuing Professional Teacher Development for Knowledge Economy. The student is expected to submit his work on 31st of March. Looking forward to hearing from you. This is uh, Professor, I don't even know him, R.N. Marishane, uh, Faculty of Education, the University of Pretoria. I, I am the external examiner. I examined for Pretoria and Cape Town universities. And uh, I don't write to say, please, is there an opportunity for me to examine? So I said, I am willing. Uh, greetings, I accept the nomination, and it's always an honor to serve as an external examiner of your esteemed university. Blessings, you are sincerely a hero. And within minutes, uh, greetings, Prof. Thank you for your speedy response. I highly appreciate it. Regards and best wishes. I, I am talking about uh, being a global citizen. And you know, every time I examine a thesis from Pretoria or Cape Town, each thesis is now 600 US dollars. 600 times, yeah, 600 times 150 is how much you will do the maths and uh, and uh, how long will it me, take me to examine a thesis it is um, three days but i do an extensive job so if i do two theses i can make i'm talking about punishing yourself and this is the time to start Otherwise, Utanza Kuzunguka, moonlighting from one university, from Daystar to uh, Methodist to whichever, to wherever, Matatus up and down to earn 30,000 shillings, which is taxed 30%. Muku Ngunzi. So, my, my question, Prof, was. Uh, yesterday after i presented my my topic you told me that i need to think about it well and mm -hmm. i'm up with a new well structured topic you are number what on the list number number 12 or 13 number 12 yeah yeah when you are you are talked about qualitative case study yeah, yeah, on women in education leadership. Mm -hmm. So I I thought about it, about my topic, mm -hmm. and decided to narrow it down on what I wanted to talk about, the, mm -hmm. the gender bias in appointment of uh, school principals in Kenya. Okay. Okay, yeah. so what you do, uh, if I had made those comments, you simply do the topic and forward it. It will reach me through the directorate. Okay. Yes, uh, so that we don't uh, hold the whole class. I will now deal, like now, Gaki, I have her topic. I'm going to look yeah. at it and I will communicate. And the same with you. Just indicate... You had indicated this um, number 12 on the list and blah, blah, blah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Josephine? Uh, thank you, Prof. I had the same issue, so mm. I will do a directed. Please do that. Helen? 
Uh, good evening, Prof and classmates. Mm. Um, mine is not per se a question, but thank you so much for helping me refine my topic yesterday. Um, mm. At the moment, I think I just feel like uh, I have some butterflies. Now you're making my brain to think, um, would it mm. be possible to hear from any of the PhD students about their experience when they were at the stage we are today? Yes. How did they handle the challenges or something like that? Well, okay, very good. Uh, that is called helicopter thinking. Very good. Juliet? Okay, thank you so much, Prof, for your guidance. I just have a question, maybe before even I go through Dr. Ayuya, uh, based on uh, the correction you have given to me. Mm -hmm. I've I, I have something like the school culture and the academic performance. Could that be framed to become a topic? Yeah. Yeah. School culture or school wellness. Yeah. It is true. And, and uh, there are many aspects of school culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we, we, so it's still broad. When you come to school culture, it's just like leadership style you'll have to tell me which aspects okay yeah, yeah. but uh, please don't still we are we are cleaning this and the, the more you the quickly you respond to my doubts or my worries or my questions we will respond immediately that's the promise so that you are not stopping you're carrying on All right, uh, uh, Mwaka, you wanted, no, somebody wanted to hear something from uh, 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 the your brothers and sisters who are ahead of you. Is there any PhD student who would like to share our experience? Business, we are from uh, communication and we are from clinical psychology. Uh, Desmond, Desmond, you want to respond? You've been here uh, quite a lot. I don't know if you're still on. There is a faith. Off. There is faith. There's a messy faith. Yeah. Faith, you can go ahead. All right. Which program Thank are you? you. Thank you, Professor Airo. Um, yes. My name is Faith Amisi. I'm doing my PhD in, um, in human resource management. I was mm. in Daystar. I did my master's degree at Daystar University. Um, mm. Uh, many around 10 years back or nine thereabouts. And mm. um, my experience with reference to defense is um, um, one, this is what I would say. Number one is uh, before defense, such forums, such sessions, um, attend them frequently and and do a lot of, um, a lot of uh, attending of many of these defenses because they guide you on the aspects the examiners will look at or will assess or will will delve into when you're doing your defense so that is it's it's like a guiding light on what to expect during your defense that's number one number two um just uh, have your material right and 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 you will make it you have a great team behind you Desta is committed to research, which is very critical to, to students in the MBA program and the master's program, whichever it is. So, so, so you're in safe hands. You're in safe hands. The university is committed to research. Um, um, work with your supervisor, very critical. That will, will help you through the journey. And, and all I can say is you are in safe hands. You will graduate. You will finish. You are in safe hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank Any you. Any other comments uh, from anybody in the Desmond, class? You, Maybe Desmond, from... you there? Go ahead, please. <laughs> Prof, and, and I probably am the, that I am probably the wrong person to ask because I, I did my MBA, I made certain mistakes in life. I did my MBA in 1993. I finished in 1994. Uh, a bit of a different program. But I will I will be very candid. One during our time and uh, and um, and and you 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 bear with me. We didn't have the amount of materials we have like a computer. There were there were no computers for that time for that matter. The books were not as there was no Google Scholar 
of, of, of the kind of level which we have today. And, and that, that was 1993, you know. Now, Prof, and, and, and I want to give my experience with working with Prof, where we've started at, we started at, by looking at, we had close to 15 topics. We've been coming and, and we've been talking for more than three months. And the whole thing is punish yourself, you know. And I think punishing yourself as, 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 as Prof keeps talking is, is the key to everything. And we've just had the word read, read, read. We have all the materials, you know. And then what amazes me in, in Daystar particularly, I was in Nairobi University. At that time, they, they, there was a quote that there was an elimination kind of system. I've not seen a course where the course instructor is the vice chancellor and he is holding your hand to the level of where he takes you through a topic. Um, it reminds me of the, 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 the reflection we had today on, on, in, in Genesis, you know, and I know it's a bad reflection, but I think we are lucky in that you have faculty to hold your hands. If you do not push and work hard and keep going back to your, to your, to your, to your supervisor, then you're making a mistake yourself because the supervisors are there for you. During my time, the supervisors were not there. We were very, there were very few um, PhDs in business at that time to, to hold your hand the way we are doing it. Somebody like Professor, I'll give my personal experience, Professor Iro, you give him work tonight, by tomorrow, 7.30, he has given you Kiam <laughs> Shakinwa. He's already back to you. And, and that way, if you punish yourself and with a guarantee, the difference between our time, there was no guarantee of when you're going to finish. But with this, you've got a guaranteed period that you're going to finish. So, Helen, you should not have any butterflies. You should punish yourself. Just punish yourself. Read. We are lucky enough you have your topic right now, you know, and, and it's been digested for you to a level where all you need to do is now move to the next level. I think that it, with all fairness, um, um, I think I think that is my experience with what I'm seeing today in Daystar. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you. Uh, there's a, is it Stacy? Uh, your hand is up. Is it up, Stacy? Yes, Professor. Mm, yes. Yes, I was responding to Brian on a question he asked. My voice will be a bit slow. I'm having a dental problem. Oh, boy. And uh, Prof, uh, my name is Stacy. I'm uh, pursuing a PhD in communication. Mm. And uh, we were lucky to have you while you were starting the semester to teach mm. us a RS 850. Eight, yeah, 850, but unfortunately, you bossed us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm very glad. It's my first time I'm interacting with you online. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, Wednesday. Tuesday was my first time interacting with you physically, although I didn't come anywhere close to you. So I did my master's at Daystar, and uh, um, somebody asked us to tell them what was our experience. I can say it's nothing close to uh, close to, to what you're currently experiencing. As we didn't experience Professor Iro we experienced other people and I want to tell you that you're experiencing the best and I'm even challenged uh, uh, with the topics that we are we are about to now start uh, planning to defend towards uh, the, the, the coming semester or rather we are now working on them so you shouldn't uh, get scared or get butterflies you're in safe hands just like you've been told but you only need to focus and listen to what you're being told. Now, Professor, um, I don't have a question, but I have a request. There are classes you normally take on Thursday, but on Thursday we also have classes in the evening. And uh, today we, we were just lucky again that uh, one of our colleagues who always shares about your classes shared this link. That's how I found myself here. And I was so excited that I could get a chance to 
to listen to you correcting master's stu master students. And I feel like we should also, um, not we should, or rather we, we need to get an experience with you. I don't know when you can also get mm. an opportunity for some of us. Mm. Um, personally, um, I, I, I had a proposal and um, before I started and uh, I am planning to, I am finishing my coursework and mm. uh, I'm hoping to graduate very soon. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I don't know <laughs> if we can get an opportunity. Not that uh, we are not having a, a good chance. Uh, wherever we are, we are doing very well. Mm. But uh, we also want to to experience. You know, the way I've seen the way you just simply making topics come out and you know um they they come out so excited that you even get the challenge to read even when you don't want to read mm. and um i don't know if you will mm. be able to respond about that yeah yeah i will i will respond yeah but uh generally this has been a very exciting moment Thank you. Maybe I can I can also drop my topic here. Okay, why not? Why not? Uh, I can see uh, there's a candidate, Sonia Mutende. Uh, just a minute, Sonia, before you come in. Uh, you know, personally, I have an obligation uh, because I've had such a lucky streak in life. Uh, I have done three masters. I've done a PhD. I've done a postdoc. Uh, all sponsored by the people of Kenya, uh, the government. I never paid a cent. Uh, the masters from South Africa was paid by the German government. Uh, the economics of education. So I owe it to the country to give back. Secondly, God has given me the privilege to lead DASTA for the time I'm here. And I'm a professor of research methods. That's, that's who I am. So it is so important that I impart knowledge that will give DASTA a competitive advantage. And uh, in many aspects, we are seeing that. Just this week, uh, with a joint venture with the JQuart, we have been given a consultancy to monitor and evaluate the North Corridor Highway, uh, a consultancy of 284 million Kenya shillings by the World Bank. Uh, uh, Jomo Kenyatta will be doing the technical evaluation of the roads and bridges. We will be doing the social dimensions, the social impact of the project, schools, health centers, uh, uh, erosion, uh, safety measures on the road, and so on. So this is, uh, this is something I'm very deliberate about. Uh, and uh, when you see us go through every topic, we literally want every student to move to the next level. And for me, the master's class, I am preparing you such, such that when you come for your PhD, it's a walkover. Because all these things we are teaching, we're going to teach you again, but in a more expanded way. So I, I have no problem. Uh, I, I've, I've requested uh, the coordinators of the PhD uh, in uh, in business and in psychology and now development studies to uh, organize for seminars and uh, we will present. We can come and do, just talk about literature review. We can come and do uh, methodology chapter three. We can come and do chapter one, uh, you know, crafting of the problem with the statement, assumptions. Like today, I wanted to cover assumptions, limitations, limitations, because that is the that that those are the 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 foundational 
uh, uh, pillars of uh, a PhD research. And then uh, let me tell you something. If you don't get it now, even if you get that PhD, even if you get that master's, you will not flourish. Because you're not bid for a consultancy and win. Because a consultancy is a proposal. You will not be rated. You don't become an examiner, PhD examiner for the University of Cape Town or Pretoria. You don't. Just like that. They want to see your citations. They want to see your HI index, your I index. They want to see when when they gave me their thesis. For, when I when I give back a report, let me give you an example. Last year, I wrote a report, an evaluation, a typed report, font 12, uh, double space, of about 15 pages. I have seen PhD examiners in data, external examiners, give us a report of hardly one page. Of course, I have instructed they will never examine again, never, so long as I'm in this university. But God will resist you. God will resist you. So I don't say anything to University of Pretoria or Cape Town or Texas and them where I'm an external exam. They just send me thesis. And then I wait for my checks to come through the bank. You, you have got to punish yourself right now. Uh, the, the, like now, my master's students, when I tell you, engage with Draka, it should be an instruction. It should be uh, something that is almost sacred. Then you will become. Then God will walk you beyond, you know, uh, I thank God for the renewal of my contract, but that tells you I'm, I am transiting, you know, after this period. Uh, who becomes the next vice chancellor of DESTA? Who becomes the next DVC? You are all lined up for those positions, but in a university, you cannot lead if you don't have intellectual authority. You can't. It doesn't matter whether you have a PhD in what, what, but if you don't, if your peers don't respect you intellectually, you can't lead a university. You can be given the position, but the university will not run. You can't win a consultancy with the World Bank or UNESCO. So, so uh, uh, Tessie, yes, uh, I am very worried. In fact, I'm very worried with the, the development studies class. I'm worried about the business cohort. I, I attended a defense. I was I was examining one of you from School of Communication, and I had I, I I was I had sleepless nights. I spent two days reading that thesis, and when I went for defense, I my my hopes were just shattered. So yes, we we are in this together, and uh, we'll arrange to come and uh, do seminars. And uh, uh, nobody is saying they are better than anybody. We are just saying we are. Sonia, uh, as we end. Yeah, thank you, Prof. I'm, I'm, I'm doing PhD in uh, strategy and innovation from Daystar. I did my master's 12 years ago. So just to respond to the student, um, fellow student who said about being scared of butterfly. The butterfly should not even develop the wings to fly. Having the basis of this class, our experience was different. Uh, as my fellow scholar has noted about the Google Scholar, getting materials, uh, I've, I've, I've listened to this class and the previous one. That's why the foundation here is very, it's very crucial. That's why you see us, the PhD student coming to join. Otherwise, we will not be bothered if we are getting nothing out of it. So you have the best. Nothing to worry with this basic for this uh, class you're undertaking for your PhD will be a smooth run because you have the basic foundation. So worry not, there's nothing new you will do about your paper or thesis from what you have been taught because we have been following. So I will say uh, you have the best foundation so far. Thank you. 
Uh, Caro, can you close the session? Prof, I think uh, this has been very good. And I think uh, now we have uh, everybody, us, uh, I think everyone is here is living with uh, this understanding. And I think the remaining two students, so three, I mean, now four, we'll have them next two, next time. But I think the others can start moving forward once you help them now to the next areas of chapter one. So we we, we as a staff, I think there is Cherui here, that uh, there is also Sitati and others who are on. Uh, we are all um, excited to have these students. We pick them up as our second supervisors to see them walk through this uh, journey. Probably by next week, we shall be having a, 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 a schedule for them on who comes in as their second supervisor as you're taking them through the proposal, um, writing as their first supervisor. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, the students, uh, particularly the master students, there's no stopping. Uh, keep just keep that pace so that when we meet on Thursday next week for me to fill in uh, the aspects of assumptions, the limitations, limitations, conceptual framework, you are already moving. You have already farmed up uh, your, your concept, past objectives. And even use, you have the notes we covered, use them. Uh, so that by end of next week, we are closing chapter one and everybody must be at that stage. It might not be perfect. There will be other areas you're still not happy with, but you'll have a draft chapter one in your hands. Then we'll move on to chapter two. And if need be, we shall pick extra classes. We can pick extra classes, even if it's on weekends, so that by the time this semester is coming to an end, you actually have your draft zero of your proposal. Thank you very much. God bless you and good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Uh, good night. Good night. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Good night. Prof. Good night. 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 Good